watched Tesla Model 3 become a tank riding on huge tracks. We've seen our fair share of Tesla off-road makeovers over the years, but this one just might be the most extreme. Tesla makes great EVs and their sales figures couldn't paint this picture any more clearly, but what the automaker can't quite offer is personalization. Basically, all are pretty much identical, and in order to turn it into something special, you will have to invest a lot of time and money and also tap into some creativity. The Real Life Guys, a popular YouTube channel from Germany that focuses on various weird vehicle builds, just released a video showing their process of creating what has to be one of the most extreme Teslas ever. They took a Model 3 and created a custom subframe complete with massive tank tracks weighing a reported one ton each. Homemade Steam Locomotive Plus Railroad On the screen is an amazing project a railroad and steam locomotive from Russian engineer Pavel Chilin the work took him more than 10 years but now he has 1148 feet of track 7 switches and several routes at its disposal the railroad can be used for entertainment as well as for work for example to carry goods for landscaping the locomotive's power is about 5 horsepower it runs on firewood and accelerates to about 15 miles per hour the entire project as a whole is so unique that it even made the news homemade flame Thrower. Want to kill it with fire, yet the aerosol flamethrower or Molotov cocktail probably isn't enough? Well, the homemade flamethrower has you covered. This trope is exactly what it says on the tin, a homemade and jury-rigged fire-breathing weapon or generally some kind of weapon or tool that uses or breathes. Created from a bunch of tools, scrap slash junk and other doodads that could feasibly be made into a flamethrower or flame-using tool. The reason this is done is because flamethrowers aren't exactly the easiest things to acquire. Sometimes you'll just have to make one on your own or have someone that's more savvy with tinkering to make one for you. The weapon can be a godsend, especially if you're facing enemies that have a particular weakness to fire. Although do be warned, these weapons are also eligible for flamethrower backfire, thanks to their slapdash nature, they are prone to malfunctions and depending on their construction probably won't last very long either because of fuel concerns or it's not very stable. Given that most ordinary people lack access to napalm, the homemade construction can justify video game flamethrowers suck. Photographer flies a homemade boat plane over the South Pacific in breathtaking video. A man has garnered an incredible amount of attention after flying a homemade dinghy plane over the Solomon Islands in the South Pacific. The amazing footage shows Ben Neal, 37, from Australia, taking the nail-biting trip to photograph some unexplored areas of the Pacific. He had the aircraft shipped from the USA in 8,000 pieces and put it together without rudimentary instructions. The photographer said, I had it shipped from the USA for 8,000 in pieces and put it together without too much knowledge on how it was meant to be assembled. The process took Ben around two months, but it came together as a spectacular machine. The service ceiling is around 10,000 feet, he explained. rice transplanter machine is easy to operate high efficiency it's manual the rice transplanter can plant two rows at the same time you may adjust the distance as you need this machine is the agriculture machine to transplanting rice also solves the problem of the float seedling seedling adaptation period is shortened to two to three days manual rice and patty transplanter adjustment is more reasonable and convenient it's very cost-saving, improve efficiency, also save water during nursery stage. This manual rice and patty transplanter is a hand crank slash hand roll rice transplanter. This manual rice transplanter machine is walking backward type. It is widely applicable to rice planting of small field, especially for hilly areas. This rice patty transplanter is flexible, 
simple operation, labor and time saving, ideal for small farmers. This bricklaying robot is changing the future of construction. Human workers were laying brick as early as 1700 BC. For this millennium, Australian company FBR has created a bricklaying robot to do the job better, safer, and more efficiently. Decades in the making, a bricklaying robot is disrupting the construction industry. Hadrian X is capable of laying a block, a specially designed construction material 12 times larger than a standard brick, every 45 to 50 seconds. Benefits of a bricklaying robot include improved efficiency and reduced waste, as specialty software and algorithms allow for a single source of data to estimate costs. Brick is one of the oldest building materials, dating back to 700 BC for sun-hardened varieties and 3500 BC for the first kiln-fired blocks. It's also among the most versatile, used for modern abstract menorah shapes and stunning arches. Even the method of laying bricks, spreading mortar, positioning a brick, and smoothing out excess mortar with a trowel has remained the same for millennia. A Brief History of Paratrike Fly in Mospolomus, Gran Canaria We want to explain to you how Paratrike was created. A paratrike is basically a car with three wheels, a trike that can have one or two seats, depending on whether it is used for individual flights or two-seater flights. This trike is supported by a large paraglider and is propelled by a motor to which a propeller is attached. The idea to create this type of machines arose at the end of the 80s from the necessity on the part of the pilots of paragliding to find alternative places for the takeoff. Since the flight without motor requires of great height the reason why normally the takeoffs are made from hills or summits of mounts dash. In this way, the idea of placing an engine with a propeller on the back of the pilot to help him in the maneuver of the takeoff arose. This is what is known as paramotor. Backyard 4.2G This is perhaps the most dangerous homemade invention of all a roller. Coaster This huge project was carried out by a British inventor in his backyard that's where he tested the mini roller coaster and then set it in operation for family and friends. The tracks were assembled mostly from wooden parts. The rails were made of plastic tubing and the sleepers are made of wood. The car is very simple and the users are protected by safety belts. The internal mechanisms are powered by a 3 and a half inch air catapult that generates over 1,200 pounds of thrust the track is. Quite short too, so it only takes only a couple of seconds for the car to reach the end of it. However, the initial speed gives you a thrill and a rush of adrenaline to the bloodstream. Hovercraft This hovercraft was built by Ken McDonald. The vehicle was created with materials the inventor had at hand. Ken used insulation and wooden sheets, put the hull together with glue, and even used concrete blocks to create the right pressure. A durable plastic coated fabric was chosen for the air pad. The finished vehicle only moves on smooth surfaces or soft grass at low speed and makes quite a bit of noise, however, it still impresses everyone who sees it. Water Car Panther is the amphibious Jeep car boat you forgot existed. It turns out Water Car is no longer in business. After several years of engineering and producing the best amphibious vehicles the world has ever seen, Water Car has been forced to close down production due to the new CARB, California Air Research Board, regulations, Chad March, son of company founder Dave March, told Motor Trend in an email. We are formally announcing we are putting the company up for sale. The sale includes all of Watercar's patents, along with the manufacturing equipment, molds, fixtures, and tooling jigs necessary to build the Panther, Panther XL, and Python. So if you're an entrepreneur in the market for a car boat hybrid to build and sell, here's an investment opportunity for you.
The Human Drone Project First, we assumed that flight control hardware and software on our human drone would not be much different from that used in small drones, for which much of the technical information shared through forums and open source documentation on the web. So really our first job was to understand what was available in the market for motors, batteries and propellers, so that we could determine all basic design elements such as weight, geometry and performance. Once the requirements were defined, our challenge became to design a lightweight, sturdy, rigid, and reasonably priced frame. After a month of and more than 10 simulation models, we came up with a design that fulfilled the design elements and essentials. Later, motors, ESCs, flight controller, batteries, sensors, and propellers will be bought over the internet as well as aluminum, which will be cut into rods and sent to a welding shop. Prior to final assembly, we will fine-tune the software through the scale model since our goal is to build it to be as safe as possible. At the time you are reading this text, many of these tasks might be already done. That's why you should look at our latest posts to stay updated. Hungaro Copter HC-02, an ultralight personal helicopter. The Hungaro Copter is a Hungarian helicopter designed by lead engineer Zoltán Juhasz and produced by Hungaro Copter Limited of Verpla. The aircraft is supplied as a kit for amateur construction that the aircraft was designed to comply with the European Microlight Aircraft Rules. It features a single main rotor and tail rotor, a single seat enclosed cockpit with a fairing, or an open cockpit without a windshield, skid landing gear and a four-cylinder, for stroke 135 horsepower Subaru EJ22 or 160 horsepower Subaru EJ25 automotive conversion engine Wikipedia. Paddlewheel pontoon powered by zero-turn mower. It's very maneuverable and fun to drive. It also has a lot of pulling power and can go through heavy weeds without slowing down, says Roy Flippett, Scott, Ohio, who built a one-of-a-kind paddlewheel pontoon boat powered by an old Dixon zero-turn riding mower. The boat measures 18 feet long by 8 feet wide and floats on a pair of 20 feet long pontoons. There's no outboard motor on back. Instead, propulsion is provided by a pair of four feet dia. Paddle wheels about halfway back on the boat. The paddle wheels are powered by the mower, which is bolted to the deck. Flip it started with a 1980s Dixon mower equipped with a hydrostatic transmission, which he bought used from a neighbor. He removed the wheels and deck, then used three quarters inch cold rolled steel to extend the mower's drive axles out to both sides of the boat. 